Howdy folks, I'm Abundant Apple Blossom, adorably attending artistic architectural achievements. I'm Amber. And here are more architectural achievements for us to attend as Apple Blossom. So are we like, actually like part of the architectural display? I mean, you might be. You might plant some trees on the property. I think that would work. I think that would work. Let's get started. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for being mad that I, a 31-year-old female's fiancé, a 31-year-old male, secretly spent our small travel fund? Hello, long-time lurker and commenter in need of some judgment. A few months ago, my fiancé, whom I will call Jack, and I decided to smart start a small travel fund. I told Jack that when I was in my 20s, I used to save money for trips and that I never used my travel fund for anything else like being tempted to grab some cash from it when we really needed it. It helped save me plenty without burning a hole in my pocket once I was on the road and he liked the idea. I made it explicitly clear that this was super important to me because we don't have super high earnings and anything that we can save for the fund would be lovely since we were planning to travel to Italy this year. For three or four months, we both contributed to the fund and we saved up enough to cover accommodation expenses, which made me excited. A few days ago, I was cleaning up and something made me look into our fund. Now, the fund is in an envelope. I know, I know. And I opened it just to remind myself of how much we saved, only to see that the fund was empty. The money was gone. When Jack came back from the store, I asked him where the money was. And he said he spent half of it on a gift that he recently bought for me. It was a hardcover comic book. I knew it was pricey and was very happy and grateful when I received it. Jack wouldn't say where the other half was and I was livid, not because he spent the money, though that still upsets me, but because he spent it without telling me. His excuse is that he didn't take me seriously when I said that it was important to me. Jack said that he would put the money back and that he was sorry and that he didn't think that it was going to be such a big deal. I told him that I don't trust him anymore and the fact that he used the money that I contributed to buy me my own gift or to spend it on who knows what was a severe violation of trust from my point of view. Jack said that I was being a jerk about it and we're still just as upset at each other. Was I really the jerk? I'm sorry if this text is confusing. I'll answer any questions or make any edits if something is unclear. Update. First of all, thank you all for the comments and valuable insights. I tried to respond to everyone's questions and advice, but it became impossible. What with hundreds of comments flooding in, which is not something that I expected. So thank you. I'm not sure if this is how you do an update. So I hope that everyone who is interested in the update will be able to see this. First, let me address the one thing that I now realize that I left out in my original post. The fiancé did not refuse to say where he spent the money. I was the one that clammed him up by impulsively saying that I didn't care. I was so upset that I couldn't even be in the same room, let alone listen to what he had to say, and that's on me. Secondly, a lot of people suggested that he may be gambling or cheating. He's doing neither, thank goodness. Lol, I can vouch for that. Now, update. I got up this morning and woke him up saying that we needed to readdress the money thing. He immediately got up and we started to talk. I told him that I wanted my share back as soon as possible, within this week preferably. I didn't care how he would get the money back and I told him that he was free to sell the comics if he needed to. Now on to the comics. He didn't lie about the price. He showed me a receipt and yes, it did cost as much as he had told me that it cost. I just wanted to clear that up too that I also have proof. Anyways, I asked him about where the money went and here's what he said, and to provide text for me to see. He started off with an apology and said that he would give me the money back. He restated the gift giving thing. He ordered it in February and as per the shop site, he didn't expect it before the end of March. It may sound strange, but to people from normal countries, I have been waiting for packages up to two months sometimes. He expected to get his salary right on time and pay for the comic, but this didn't happen as his pay ran two days late, which is what I remember, and the package arrived on time. So he, in his own words, carelessly took the money with the intention of returning. I asked why he didn't return it, and he apologized and said that he wanted to, but it wasn't enough for me. The rest of the money went to pay a bill from the apartment that he rented prior to us moving in. Long story short, that same buddy that I mentioned had moved into that apartment when my fiance moved out. He and I moved in, and the buddy stayed for like a month and left without paying 
that month's utilities. Instead of calling the police, the owner of the previous flat called my fiance. Since he knew his buddy couldn't pay for the bill, he ended up paying it so that he didn't call the police on the buddy. I saw the text message exchange. When asked why he didn't tell me, he said that he knew that I would be upset, but that he felt it was the right thing to do, to pay the bill, and that he now realizes just how stupid he was. Kept on apologizing, and for calling me a jerk for being mad. I told him that my trust is very hard to earn back, and that should we stay together, I will not be interested in a mutual savings or anything similar to that. I gave him a two-week deadline to give me my money back, and he said that he would give me back sooner than that. I told him that I will save on my own and that he's free to do what he wants with his money. He asked me if I could reconsider and start a travel fund again, this time using a proper bank account, etc. But I refuse and will not entertain the idea. We have decided to stay together, but I'm super cautious going forward. I've suggested couples counseling so we can figure out why in the world he does do such mindless things without asking me or even trusting me, and he has agreed to the idea, so we will see. There's a lot to rebuild, but at least now I know what actually transpired. So still mad at him, but yes, thank you. All right, folks, what do you think of this update uh, or an, and story? Yeah, I mean, I don't think OP is in the wrong here. I think it's very reasonable to be upset at your partner for taking your entire travel fund that you jointly saved for without asking. Yeah, it seems a little slimy in some respects because it seems like he knew that OP was going to object to this, but he did it anyways because he wanted to do it. And I mean, I think that that's problematic a little bit. Right. I mean, because this wasn't just his, it was joint mm -hmm. assets. And like, if he needed to pull his half, he should have approached OP and been like, hey, OP, something has come up. I want to take my half out of the travel fund. He certainly should not have gone behind OP's back and taken the entire travel fund and spent it. Yeah. And, you know, it just worries me for the state of their relationship. Like, I'm glad he agreed to counseling, but the whole thing, he seems to disregard OP's needs and being like, well, I didn't think you were serious about us saving this. Like, well, I think in that moment, he was probably like just trying to come up with something to save himself because I don't think he was expecting OP to find it gone, but um it was one of these situations where i think he was had an every intention to repay it back and not tell op that he had taken the money and it just ended up biting him in the end and i'm not saying that's right i'm just saying that i think he did have every intention of returning it potentially i don't know if i buy that completely yeah um but you know i mean the whole way he handled it was not good he could have come clean to her immediately when she found it um mm -hmm. and he why why is he prioritizing this friend who just skipped out and you know just left the apartment owner with like the bill well and even talking to op mm -hmm. about that right being like hey i just heard from my old apartment owner he's gonna call the police on jack if we don't pay this money back is there any way we can, you know, come up with the money? I don't have money on me. I'll pay you back if you give me a loan or any number of things, right? And it just feels like he kind of took the expedient route instead of uh, the proper route. Yeah, well, the dishonest route. Because, like, again, even if he intended on putting all the money back, mm -hmm. it's still dishonest mm -hmm. to take money that is mutual property without your partner's consent, you know, because things happen. Mm -hmm. You may not get that money back. And it's also important for the partner to know that you are using the money in this way. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think alone, like I can understand the whole situation with the packaging because I'm probably mm -hmm. it was like import export like goods. Uh, yeah. And like if that was really intended on being paid back pretty much immediately, then I can certainly understand like why everything happened the way it did because he was like oh this is a timing thing it's just kind of a quick easy loan but i still think he should have actually approached op with that too the right thing that baffles me about that though is he is like oh yeah my, my pay was two days late but then he still didn't pay it back yeah and so like that's why i wonder if he ever intended to pay it back because his pay period came and the money was still gone well i think also then the friend thing cropped up and right then he and that immediately was immediately where... where the rest of the money and more went to yeah so I think that this the whole friend situation is really bad and probably caused a lot of issues. And 
yeah, I don't know. Like, I think he made some very poor judgment, and hopefully things end up working out in the end, but I can't blame OP for not trusting him in the meantime. Yeah, and do not share, have shared finances with this man. Like, he is not someone to join your money with. Well, what happens when he goes and impulsively does the same kind of thing again, mm -hmm. right? It's fine to be altruistic. I'm not saying that he wasn't right to try to help his friend out, but... Also, you do need to, if you have shared finances or some kind of joint account, that's joint money at that point in time. You mm -hmm. can't make unilateral decisions with it. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk Because I Didn't Let My Friend In When He Tried to Visit Me? I'm a 26-year-old female. Last night, about 9.30, I just put my son to sleep and was about to settle down on the couch and watch the show when I heard a knock on the front door. I already jumped in fear, since that never happens, people ring the intercom first. I peeped through the peephole and I saw my friend smiling right at it. First thing I asked him is, how did you get in? And he said that there was a lady getting out and he caught the door. He asked if I was letting him in and I was like, no, to which he seemed chagrined. He said that he brought food and showed me a takeout bag and said that he could take it with him, but he left it on my door and walked away. I got this irrational fear or gut feeling that it was bait for me to open the door. Also, the automatic hallway light stayed on for a whole lot longer than it should have when he left. The thing is, he blasted the situation on our group chat immediately. He didn't lie or exaggerate the situation, but people got on his side saying I watched too many horror movies and that he was just trying to be nice. The whole night I couldn't sleep, but now the fear response has passed and I'm wondering if I was the jerk. All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. You are not entitled to let people into your house at 9.30 of night. I mean, you're not entitled to let them in, period. But if someone shows up at your doorstep randomly at 9.30 at night, no advance warning, like, yeah. you're... You, you don't have to let them in, even yeah. if they're friends. Like, this seems very, like, at absolute best, like, he, he decided to surprise you, but, like, he has to understand that you may not be up for a surprise at 9.30 at night. And that's, like, the best case scenario here. Yeah. Well, I think that OP was not under no obligation, like you said, to let this person in. And I think if you are trying to surprise someone with food... Maybe give them a heads up first, mm -hmm. let them know, hey, can I drop by, and then surprise them with food, right? Like, they, I'm sure they, if OP had answered and been like, oh, yeah, why don't you come on over, and he brought OP food while he was on his way over, they would be actually probably pretty grateful for the whole situation. But the thing is that OP is a single mom with a child in their house, and she has to be cautious and careful. The thing is that a lot of assaults happen from people you know, mm -hmm. and that's a majority of where the assaults happen. Mm -hmm. So OP's fear fears aren't unfounded here, no, right? No, they're not. And the way he's blasting OP in the group chat, too, like, this isn't like an, oh, I, I made a mistake type of situation. Like, oh, I meant to surprise OP. She was busy. Like, the appropriate response there is like, oh, I'm sorry. Leave and let it go. Yeah. The way he's blasting her in the group chat feels very coercive. He's trying to get people on his side mm -hmm. to hound her and be like, OP, you got to let this man into your house. Yeah, next time when he drops by, let him in. And again, like, I, I feel for OP in this situation because they were put in an untenable position. They mm -hmm. There was no right answer here because if they had opened the door and he had attacked her, people would have said, well, why did you open the door for this guy, right? Mm -hmm. If OP <laughs> didn't open the door, he, they get blasted on social media. And how right? could you think of him as a creep? And like, there's no winning. There's yeah. no winning. Yeah. So I feel like OP made the right decision. They made the safest decision. And it is very peculiar for you just to randomly drop by somebody's house at 930 at night if this isn't something that you normally do mm -hmm. or you don't have that kind of relationship, right? But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here. And Amber, she has an oh-so-funny, jovial Bob Stein joke. I'm already laughing because I have found it amusing. Sister, well, how are you doing with that electronic drum set you got for Christmas? Brother, great. It's the most wonderful present I ever got. Sister, why is that? Brother, dad pays me $2 a week not to play it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an asset. <laughs> and I have Mega Mint.
All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy, wonderful Wednesday. Happy Friday, Junior's Eve. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please, have it a haiku. Don't be a creeper. When someone's going to sleep, don't show at their door. I think that works. I think that works. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.